In about three or four videos, we'll be talking about anticoagulants and antiplatelet agents. But in order to understand the mechanisms by which they work, we should know every single step involved in platelet aggregation and clot formation. So, in this lecture I'm gonna take you from A to Z, through a series of questions and answers. What is hemostasis? What happens in the normal conditions? And what happens when someone is injured? The first question, what is hemostasis? You'll be hearing this word so many times, so let's start by defining it. Hemostasis is the natural process that stops blood loss when an injury occurs. When the process of hemostasis becomes impaired, the ability to effectively stop bleeding is lost. In contrast, if the mechanisms involved in hemostasis and blood coagulation become overly active, unwanted clots may form within the blood vessels or tissues. Hemostasis involves three steps, vascular spasm, platelet plug formation, and coagulation. We're gonna talk about these in details, but first we should know clearly what happens in the normal conditions. Let's make an illustration of platelets circulating in blood vessels, healthy intact endothelium, and collagen fibers in the subendothelium, and a platelet having various types of receptors on its membrane. In the absence of injury, resting platelets circulate freely, acting as vascular guards, monitoring the integrity of the vascular endothelium. There are some chemical mediators synthesized by intact endothelial cells and act as inhibitors of platelet aggregation, such as prostacyclin and nitric oxide. Prostacyclin, known as prostaglandin I2, acts by binding to platelet membrane receptors that are responsible for the synthesis of intracellular cyclic adenosine monophosphate, CAMP. This elevation in intracellular CAMP is associated with a decrease in intracellular calcium. And this stabilizes inactive glycoprotein 2B3A receptors and inhibits release of platelet aggregation agents or calcium. So what happens when an injury occurs? The first thing happens is vascular spasm. It occurs immediately following injury to a blood vessel wall to limit blood flow out of the vessel. This vascular spasm is believed to be mediated by thromboxane A2 which is released both from circulating platelets in the area of injury, and the damaged endothelial cells themselves. Then, platelet plug formation occurs in three steps. Adhesion, activation, then aggregation. Platelets are attracted to the area of injury, cover the exposed collagen of the subendothelium. This process is called adhesion. There is a protein released from endothelial cells, required for proper adhesion of platelets called von Willebrand's factor. This protein is essential for allowing platelets to adhere to collagen, as well as to one another. Then receptors on the surface of the adhering platelets are activated by the collagen. This causes morphologic changes in platelets, or we can say they become sticky, and the release of platelet granules containing chemical mediators, such as adenosine diphosphate, thromboxane A2, serotonin platelet activation factor, and thrombin. Thromboxane A2, thrombin and serotonin activate phosphopase C, and the resulting incetyl 145 trisphosphate stimulates calcium release from the endoplasmic reticulum. ADP inhibits adenyl cyclase, and the decrease in CAMP increases cytoplasmic calcium. All antiplatelet drugs act one way or another to inhibit these calcium-dependent pathways of platelet activation. That reminds us of prostaglandin I2, that is considered a physiological antagonist to these mechanisms. This increase in calcium causes three actions. The release of platelet granules containing mediators, such as ADP and serotonin, that activate other platelets. Activation of thromboxane A2 synthesis and activation of glycoprotein 2B3A receptors that bind to fibrinogen. Fibrinogen, which is a soluble plasma glycoprotein, simultaneously binds to glycoprotein 2B3A receptors on two separate platelets, resulting in platelet cross-linking and platelet aggregation. This process goes on, till forming a platelet plug. Then comes the third step, blood coagulation.
Blood coagulation is the process, in which fiber and protein strands wrap around the platelet plug, to form an insoluble clot. The process of blood coagulation occurs through two separate but related pathways, called the intrinsic and the extrinsic coagulation pathway. The extrinsic system is initiated by the activation of clotting factor 7 by tissue factor, also known as thromboplastin. Tissue factor is a membrane protein, that is normally separated from the blood by the endothelial cells that line the vasculature. However, in response to vascular injury, tissue factor becomes exposed to blood. There it can bind and activate factor 7, initiating the extrinsic pathway. The intrinsic system is triggered by the activation of clotting factor 12. This occurs when blood comes into contact with the collagen, in the damaged wall of a blood vessel. Both the extrinsic and the intrinsic pathways involve a cascade of enzyme reactions, that transform various plasma factors, proenzymes, to their active enzymatic forms. Note that in the cascade, the active form of a clotting factor, is the same as the factor plus the letter A. The final common sequence in both pathways, involves a complex that includes activated factor 10, factor 5, platelet phospholipids and calcium that catalyzes the conversion of the serum protein prothrombin to thrombin. In turn, thrombin converts plasma fibrinogen to fibrin. Then fibrin monomers bind together forming a network, that forms the insoluble clot. A final factor 13, called clot stabilizing factor, is released by platelets trapped in the platelet plug, and stimulates polymerization and cross-linking of fibrin strands. Then comes the last step, fibrinolysis, the breakdown of fibrin. Once the damaged blood vessel is repaired, the fibrin clot is no longer needed, and must be removed from the blood vessel lining. This process of fibrinolysis or clot dissolution, is accomplished by the enzyme plasmin, that digests the fibrin network. Plasmin travels in circulation as the inactive proenzyme plasminogen, and is activated by factors produced by the liver and vascular endothelium, called plasminogen activators. And there are two types of these activators, tissue plasminogen activator, TPA, and urokinase plasminogen activator, UPA. The activity of plasmin is in turn regulated, by the inhibitory enzyme alpha-2 plasmin inhibitor, which rapidly inactivates it. There are also several inhibitors of coagulation factors, including protein C, protein S, and thrombin 3. So we can summarize what happens when an injury occurs, or in other words, the steps of hemostasis, in a sentence. First, vascular spasm occurs to limit blood loss. Then platelet adhere to collagen and the subendothelial cells, then get activated and release their contents. Then aggregate, forming a platelet plug. Then blood coagulation cascade starts, forming fibrin network, leading to an insoluble clot. And when healing occurs, plasmin digests fibrin and dissolves the clot. And that's it. That's all for this lecture, I know that was longer than usual but it's essential to know these information before going through the drugs in the next lecture. So subscribe and wait for the next lecture.